And so, uh, Eric, we'll start out this way. What are you going to be doing this time tomorrow? Uh, I work for UPS, so this time tomorrow I will be um, passionately driving um, under the speed limit safely, uh, delivering uh, next day air packages uh, that have to be delivered by 1030. So all of us love our UPS guys, right? All of us love our UPS guys and girls, that's for sure. So, so tell us, I'm just interested. So you have to load your truck before you go out. So do you do all the work of loading it and then unloading it? Or, or do you have people that work for you that do that? Or how does that happen? Someone else uh, loads up my truck uh, in the morning. And then uh, by the time, I actually, my day starts at 4 o'clock in the morning. So I work at 4 o'clock in the morning until maybe 12, 12.30. Uh, I have different uh, job uh, responsibilities. Uh, I get in at 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I help load up some trucks. Uh, then I will go ahead and uh, move trucks around. Then by 5.30, I uh, go down to the uh, Miami uh, International Airport, pick up packages, come back, and then I go out on my regular route, uh, usually around 9 o'clock in the morning. Wow. And then you, you work till how long every day? So what, what is your schedule from 4 until... About 12.30, 12.45. Okay. All right, yeah. Boy, I always admire people that get up really, really early in the morning. So, so what time do you have to get up? Because I'm sure you spend like an hour and a half in prayer for your pastor and different things before you go, right? So what time do you have to get up in the morning? Well, I mean, I start my prayer for my pastors at midnight. So um, <laughs> typically, uh, no, I'm, I'm up uh, an hour before I have to go to work, and then I leave a half an hour before, uh, before I have to get there. So usually 3 o'clock. Wow, long day. So, so, Eric, how do you remind yourself that you work for the Lord? So it's easy when you see the paycheck and it says UPS or, or you report to a boss, it's easy to know that you work for that company. But how do you remind yourself on a daily basis that you really don't work for them, that you work for the Lord? Well, I've worked for UPS. It'll be uh, 31 years in uh, this September. And, uh, well, thank you. <clears throat> I would love to say that all those years were God-honoring years, but they really weren't. Um, that was a struggle for me, uh, the first 15 years of uh, working uh, for UPS, um, realizing that I was working for God. Because uh, when you're a good employee, uh, they tend to put more on you. They, pretend, uh, they, they give you more work. Uh, I call it putting out fires. They give you a different fire every single day that you're responsible uh, to put out. And uh, I struggled with that because I felt that I, my rights were being violated, you know. Uh, I have more seniority than other people. Why am I being called to to do this? Uh, but because of a, a godly wife uh, that was praying for me and the life group that I was in at that time, they were helping me to see that, listen, you're, God has given you the gifts and the other uh, talents that you have, and he's using you uh, there for a reason. So it wasn't until the last 15 years that I was able to let go of, of my rights and let go of my feelings and say, okay, okay God, uh, I know that your hand is in this, and I know that I'm working for you, despite with the supervisor with his veins popping out and, and you know, turning red, what he's saying to me. So, so how does your job, what you do, enhance and bring value to God's creation? And then I'll put a tag on that. And how does your job advance the kingdom of God? I guess looking at creation, uh, I'm out there in the public, and um, everyone that I meet is, uh, is God's creation, no matter what color they are. And uh, God had to kind of hit me with a, a spiritual two-by-four to uh, remind me of that. Uh, I'm down at the courthouse. I'm in the elevator. Uh, I'm around the uh, UM uh, research facility campus. So I'm, I'm around doctors. I'm around lawyers. I'm around police officers. So I'm in the elevator with them. I'm, I'm joking with them, talking with them. Uh, but yet when I would deliver to a Camilla's house, I would just kind of want to go in and, and, and get out, not really talk to anyone. Uh, and God had to check me, like, listen, uh, those that need encouragement are those that are at Camilla's house, those that are uh, uh, kind of down on their luck right now, not the people in the elevator that are, that are wearing $500 suits. Yes, Christ died for them as well, but Christ also died for those that are uh, uh, just kind of down on, on their luck right now. So what I started doing was going out whenever I have a delivery for Camilla's house, make sure I'm making a point to say good morning and make eye contact with, uh, with people down there. Just to let them know that they have value. So, so, so one final question, and, and I'm going to prompt you with something that you shared with us. So the question is, what opportunities has your job or your responsibilities given you to share the gospel and or just love on people? And I remember, if I can prompt you, that story 
about the water bottle that you shared with. I don't know whether that's what you want to share, but I know that was powerful if you shared that with our leadership team sometime ago. It's not the one I was going to share, but I'm going to share that. <laughs> no, um, this particular time, uh, I was uh, driving in my, uh, my UPS truck. I was uh, coming back to the building, so my day was, uh, was pretty much over. And uh, typically, I'll see this, uh, this particular homeless guy that I've kind of uh, uh, connected with, and I would give him something if, uh, if I had it. Uh, but this particular day, I was kind of in my feelings. I was, you know, trying to get back to the building. It was late. I was running behind. Uh, my truck was full of packages. And uh, I come to the light, and I see the guy over there, but I'm, I'm trying not to make eye contact. If I don't see him, then, you know, he, he doesn't see me. Uh, but God prompted me saying, hey, listen, you have something in your cooler. Go ahead and give it to him. But the light turned green, so, oh, can't do it, got to go. So I drove through the, uh, through the light, uh, but then about two blocks later, God was still kind of nudging me there, saying, hey, listen, uh, here's a person in need, and you have something. So I made a U-turn, came back, had to go two blocks down, make a new, another U-turn to come back into uh, to where this guy was at. Um, I went and I opened up the other door to my truck, and I went and I grabbed the water, and I had a, a Gatorade uh, in there as well. I grabbed the water bottle, but God was like, no, give him the, uh, the Gatorade. I'm like, I don't want to give him the Gatorade. <laughs> Gatorade was, was, was for me. But God prompted me to uh, give him the other uh, Gatorade. So I grabbed the other uh, Gatorade. As I drove past him, I handed it to him. And he's like, oh, man, thank God. Uh, that was, uh, you, you don't know how bad I needed this today. That was, that was right on the spot. So that, that was just a reminder to me that when God prompts you to do something, just do it. So you don't have to continue doing U-turns in your life uh, because of, you, you could have done it the other uh, first time around. What were you going to share? Um, <clears throat> recently, uh, I have a, um, this one building that I delivered to, there's a, a young lady, maybe in her mid twenties that uh, just started working there. She's a, uh, re a receptionist. Uh, we happened to be standing at the, uh, the elevator one day and, uh, I heard her humming a, a song. I, I try to stay in tune with, with, uh, the people around me. That's one thing UPS teaches you, uh, be aware of, uh, of your surroundings. So I'm standing there at the elevator and I hear, I'm hearing her hum this song. Um, and God prompts me to say, you know, I believe that's a Christian song that she's humming. So we get into the elevator, but I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to seem like, you know, a freak or a stalker or anything like that. Uh, but once again, God is, is nudging me. And I asked her, I'm like, you know, uh, was that a Christian song that you were humming? You know, uh, God is good. She's like, oh, my God. Yes, it was. You know, are you a believer? I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believer. So we had a, a moment to share there, kind of give our, our testimony. Uh, two days later, I see her again. And uh, she comes up to me. She's like, listen. I've been fasting and I've been praying because there's a, a decision that I need to make. You mentioned that uh, about hearing from God. You know, how do you hear from God? How do you know that you're hearing from God and not hearing from man? Because uh, I love working here at my job, but my uh, pastor wants me to become a, uh, uh, his assistant, his uh, secretary. So how do I know if I'm hearing from God or if I'm hearing from man? So I'm like, wow. Well, I'm glad this wasn't, you know, this is after 1030 because I wouldn't be able to uh, the answer. Um, but I just asked God, you know, to give me the words to, uh, to speak to her. Uh, so I said, well, if you're working inside the church, more than likely there's going to be Christians that are there. You're working in a research facility, so you're going to have different people coming in every single day that might not know Christ. So you're going to have more of, of an opportunity to share your, your testimony and share Christ with people working in the office that you're in. And you should have seen the, the click and the light bulb and her, li her eyes just lit up. It's like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. I never looked at it from, uh, from that angle. So, and it all came from hearing her hum a song and then listening to, uh, to the Holy Spirit's voice to ask her about that song. Cool. Cool. That's excellent. Let's give Eric a hand. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate it.